Hi, welcome to Ladies of Another View. I'm back, and it's just an, a three amigo team again today. We've got Jan and Carmen, and we're going to have two exciting guests on today. In just a minute, I'm going to introduce to you um, Heather Wachnick, but for, uh, later in the show, we're going to have Yana Myrtle, Senator Yana Myrtle, and she's going to talk about this fourth trimester resolution. And you might say, what is that? Yeah, well, we're going to find out. But first, I would like to welcome Heather Wachnick. Hi, Heather. Thanks for joining us. Hey there. Uh, Hi, thanks Heather. for having me. Heather has written an awesome book. Quit freaking out. Don't we all need to quit doing that? Totally. <laughs> yep, and the subtitle is How to Stop Letting Fear and Insecurity Hold You Back. And I don't care who you are, I think we all have those moments. Some, we, some have those moments more than often. And from what I read in your book, Heather, you had a lot of those moments and you conquered a lot of them, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and there's nothing um, like somebody who's been there, done that, and I wanna say, that she's a licensed counselor and a minister, so that you've been a counselor for 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so you've seen a lot and you've helped a lot of people. Um, when you say quit freaking out, what do you mean by that? Well, it was kind of a lighthearted um, expression for uh, to kind of draw people into the book, because I kind of felt like if it was a, maybe a real serious title, um, about fear and anxiety. I mean, it would certainly draw people, but I think we can all relate to the idea of, I need to quit freaking out. Absolutely. You know, there, there's a lot of different places in the book. Yes, I have my autograph signed copy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've taken to kind of using it more like um, a devotional. I go back and review different sections and they just kind of seem to open up to me at the right time. Um, one of my favorites in the book is the section that it kind of really applies to what's happening in our world today. And it's, it's in chapter eight where you say, decide whom you will listen to. I mean, with everybody following everything that's on the media and following it hook, line, and sinker, you know, there's a lot of us that need to get a hold of what lies really are, how Satan works in our life, and how he kind of twists things so that there's a little bit of truth in a lie. Um, yeah. Can you kind of expound on, you know, how we can be better qualified to discern truths from lies and how you went about it? Boy, you didn't jump in with an easy question, did you? Absolutely <laughs> not. Let's get into meat and taters. Yeah. Can we say <laughs> that the, these two are sisters? And, um, and that is not why Heather's on the show, though, because I read the book and I thought, wow, this is really a good book. So anyways, just so that the audience right. can enjoy that little si uh, sibling banter. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do a deep dive right away. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of a background um, to kind of bring you into Jeanette's um, question to me is um, I did grow up feeling very insecure and um, lacking a lot of confidence. I battled a lot of anxiety and depression. They even did some into my adult life. And so I, I did have some pretty significant turning points in my life, but um, what I had to do in order to start, um, I guess, getting free from some beliefs that weren't true, what, um, I guess what you'd call lies, um, false beliefs, irrational thinking, is I had to um, really begin to examine what I believed, um, how true it was or, or not true, and my anchor or my source for truth became my relationship with with christ um, when i was about 17 years old i had a a very life-changing encounter with god uh, that's kind of the best way to say it um, i had known about christ growing up i knew that he was god he was loving and forgiving but it never really had a, a big impact in in my life until i was about 17 years old and at that point i was at an incredibly low, incredibly destructive time. I was drinking, I was using drugs, I had an eating disorder, I had zero self-esteem, and I believed a lot of terrible things about myself. Um, so kind of fast forward a little bit toward what Jan was asking about. 
is, you know, I began this journey. I had this encounter and relationship with Christ that was absolutely life-changing. And one of the first things I experienced with him, with Christ, was a absolute unconditional love, um, a forgiveness. And I felt it. It was real. It was tangible. And it was the first time I, I realized there was something truly bigger than me in God. Um, I could be loved as I was probably even actually in my worst, my worst condition, my worst place. I was, I was a mess really. And at that time is when I got to experience Christ's love for me, his forgiveness. And that started the journey, um, for me to be in a relationship with him where he could begin to teach me about what was true and what wasn't, to be honest with you. So, um, for me, my greatest source of what is true has come from Christ. And I think of, um, you know, when Jesus talked about, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Um, he has been a truth to me. He has been my truth, and he has been the one that's helped me sort of cut through a lot of um, beliefs and thinking that got established in my life at an early age, some that get established as an adult. Um, and so I think first and foremost, it was finding out what, where do we find truth? And how do you know what is, what is true and what isn't? And for me, God became um, the one to start cutting through some things for me. First of all, teaching me about who he is and who I really am. And as I watched, um, well, watched as I began to experience in teaching me things about myself, my, my personal value, my self-worth that wasn't about what other people thought of me. And what, um, I, what I like, Heather, is that you took that, you took that faith element. It's very uh, non-denominational because we're different denominations, mm -hmm. but we all got something out of it. You took that, but I don't want people to think this is a religion book. It's there. It's a big part of your life. But you also brought tools into this and helped us. And I, and I want to explore that um, as, we, as we go along. What are some of the tools and, um, that can change your thinking? Because we need to also walk a different path than what right. we did before. Well, and I think we live in a society today, too. I think of the just the revolution when it comes to how many younger people and, and older are addicted whether it's drugs, mm -hmm. alcohol, sex, I don't care. I mean, take, pick your poison. And we've gotten very secular as a society, even though we say we're still Christian, but most people don't understand what that even means. And when you find out there is a power greater than yourself, mm -hmm. I think that's where, because you're looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, I, that's what I hear you saying. And we, we only have 30 seconds. And so we'll get into this more in the next segment, but what's the importance of having those tools that you might need outside help to kind of organize your life a little bit at times? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think just um, to try to absolutely renew and transform the way you think is a process. And even in my own life and along the way, I've had a lot of tools and help and inputs. And so I have not done this journey completely alone. And that's not just about God, it's practical things right. that I've learned along the way. Um, and and it's been, it's a journey and there okay. are absolutely a lot of tools and, and things that I've learned and I put into practice and helped other people put into practice. Okay, Too so we're gonna, we're gonna get into some of these tools so that people watching can say, yeah, hey, I can do that. That's the next best step. Mm -hmm. So we'll be right back with Ladies of Another View on Beck. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality.
Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. Beck Communications is now hiring independent sales agents around the state. We're looking for highly motivated individuals to take advantage of this opportunity, selling advertising for our news and sports programming on Beck TV and sponsorships for the Bismarck Bucks indoor football team. Independent sales agents will make 50% commission on their completed sales for all products. Beck TV is the leader in broadcasting local sports, owner of the Bismarck Bucks indoor football team, and originator of newly launched news opinion programming. Submit your application now at careers at becktel.coop. This is an exciting opportunity you can't pass up. 50% commission for independent sales agents now hiring at Beck Communications. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Pub 21, your one stop for fun, drinks, and food. Our spacious facility provides COVID safe fun for you and all your friends. With nightly bingo and specials, you can be sure there's something to do for everyone. If you're staying in for the night, we've got you covered just across the way with Pub 21 Liquor. We have a wide variety of options, from wine to whiskey and everything in between. Stop in today at 1014 South 12th Street in Bismarck to see what all the buzz is about. You won't be disappointed. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back. And we are here with Heather Wachnick. She is a counselor, has been one for 20 years, and she's helping people, uh, just like her book says, how to stop freaking out. Quit freaking out and um, how to stop letting fear and insecurity hold you back. Um, and so we want to keep talking about the tools. What, what, do you do, um, what do you do when the world seems like it's falling apart and how do you get yourself back on track? Right, right. Um, and Carmen? Yeah, I had something from your book. Um, it really touched me as far as what's going on. We, we mentioned, you know, the drugs, alcohol, addictions, things that are out in our society right now. And also, I, it kind of tied in to me for the pandemic and what we've seen go on psychologically with our population. But it said POWs deal with the realization that they had lost control over their existence. Those who lapsed into a state of passive acceptance were the least likely to survive and recover. And I think a lot of fear comes into that, anxiety, all that stuff. But then it goes on to say, amazingly enough, losing control over their daily lives was more critical than their psychological well-being, or to their psychological well-being, than their more obvious sufferings, threats, hunger, beatings, and isolation. Mm -hmm. And we see different levels of that throughout our society, not like POWs had, but I mean, can you speak to that and just how much that psychology changes how we think, we, the survival mode, the everything, what goes right. on and how we fix that? Yeah, absolutely. I think with anxiety, just anxiety and fear, a couple of things can happen. First of all, you can try to become over controlling. So anxiety and fear can cause us to try to <clears throat> like clench so tight, see what, what part of my life can I control so in order to try to mitigate what I'm afraid of having happen to me. And um, it can, you know, we all know that over controlling actually doesn't tend to change the outcomes anyway. It just increases our fear because we're trying to control what we can't, you know, just that it's a, cause it's a fear-based control um, that just right. tends to go overboard. Um, so that doesn't work. However, um, there's a couple things. First of all, there will always be things in life we can't control. And there has to be a measure of acceptance with that. Um, mm -hmm. Even with uh, the things that we do to try to um, mitigate the bad situations that we think could happen or the bad outcomes that we think can happen, ultimately we don't have control over everything. We just don't. Uh, and so 
like the, the POWs, what is so important for us when we're faced with big situations in life that can feel scary or intimidating or whatever, is first of all, recognize the things that we do have control of. And I know that, you know, there's not a lot of time to go into that a lot, but it's really important. And that's what the POB, POWs that ended up psychologically making it through what was difficult is they recognized what they do have control of and they hung on to it and they used it. And they, it kind of keeps the sense of, um, it's a, a sense of um, strength still in the middle of difficult situations. It can be some very small things that we can maintain control of um that can give us that that inner strength to make it through and the second thing is that um i think what we tend to forget when we get really afraid of situations and circumstances is we don't always realize we're a lot more resilient than we are um, right human beings human beings are amazingly resilient and um, that's something I always encourage people and even try to help them see in themselves is the resilience they have. You know, probably all of us sitting here can look back over our lives over some very difficult circumstances that we've made it through and we're sitting here today because we made it through and we have resilience. And so sometimes when you're facing really hard, difficult things in life, you, you have to draw on that. that. First of all, I can't control everything. I will control what I can and I'm resilient and I can make it through what does come and keep believing that. Right. And when you talk about that, having control of something and I've seen it in my own life and others lives too, where that can, t that at, for some can go into perfectionism mm -hmm. and then you've started a whole new kettle of worms that just yes. doesn't work very well. How do you, how do you avoid the perfectionist piece? Because it, it feels like it's so much more control. It, absolutely, it absolutely is. The the dis, what I would call the dysfunctional part of perfection, why it's it's unhealthy, is that people that get very perfectionistic. First of all, they're ever, they have to try to make everything be okay. They can't fail. Everything has to be perfect. What is perfect? First of all, you know right. what is who gets to perfect? define that word, right? Yeah. That's right. Exactly. It's, it's an unrealistic standard of what is perfect anyway. And usually, people that are perfectionistic, it's driven out of um, fear and insecurity, and so the need to to control, the need to have every outcome be just exactly right, whatever that is. And usually with perfectionists, when you get perfectionists, they're so afraid of failure. They're afraid of bad outcomes that failure is terrible. Well, failure is normal. You know, none of us does everything perfectly. None of us can make everything happen. And so the reason perfectionism in and of itself is so unhealthy is it's driven out of fear and insecurity. And it's, it's, it's an unrealistic standard that is something you can never attain. I give an example in my book that it's like climbing a ladder and you never get to the top. There's always more rungs. There's always more you have to do. There's more you have to manage all the time. And um, I use the example of how control comes into that. If I am perfectionist and I worry about what people are gonna think of me as a mother, right? I, I want everybody to think I'm a great mother. And so I have to try to manage people's perceptions and what happens when my kid acts out, you know, and throws a temper tantrum and I look like a bad mother. You know, and so I try to image control. I try to manage what people are going to think of me. And I can, we can never manage what everybody's going to think of us. You right. Know? So well, and that, then we have that. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no. I, yeah. So it just gets to be this vicious cycle that, you know, you're in a constant, it feels like a constant failure mode. Right. Well, and then with that tagline that's so popular in our society now is failure is not an option. Well, sometimes that's a setup for failure that's really failure. I mean, right, right. that goes and really deep and, and can really affect. And it's better to fail than not to try at all because right. at least you're jumping into right. life. And, and how and, many of yeah. us learn from our failures? Right. I mean, absolutely. Right. I, I often say I don't learn at the mountaintops. It's where, right. <laughs> you yeah, know. So don't let that so, fear of failure stop yeah. you. You know, yeah. there was another area in the book that you talked about fear. It's like sometimes we have to do good things the right things that are not easy. The right path is often not the easy path. It takes courage and the ability to endure and not get discouraged when the odds seem stacked against you. You know, mm -hmm. your 
uh, cure, we'll say, um, is to keep your eyes fixed on something positive on Christ. Right. But not everybody has that in their life. Are there other mm -hmm. tools that everyday people can use? And we only have 30 seconds, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just flew yeah. by. Um, you know, I, I live, live with integrity, I think. Live with values that are really meaningful, good values to you and not be tossed around by every opinion, every value out there. Find out what, you know, is good and true and valuable to you. Live, live a, your life of value and integrity. And, right, and you can't go wrong with that, yes. Right. Right. Heather, yeah. I can't believe how fast it went, and yeah. so you know we have to have you on again sometime. Yeah. Thank you for being here. And we have lots Thank more to talk so about, much. so we're, we'll have you back again. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thanks. Just, Love you. Um, and Love you we'll too, be right Seth. back after these messages with Ladies of Another View on Beck. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Indoor football is back in Bismarck. Bucks football season is right around the corner. Grab a friend or family member for a night of action-packed, hard-hitting entertainment. The Bucks open at the Bismarck Event Center May 8th as they take on the Massachusetts Pirates. Catch the sweetest seats in the house right on the sidelines with VIP service at a Bucks turf table. Available now for single-game purchases. Secure your tickets today by calling 701-595-0771. Bucks football, half the field and double the fun. At Beck Communications, we've been planning for your future. Over the past decade, we've placed nearly 200,000 miles of dedicated fiber optics in the ground. Enough fiber optic strands to circle the world eight times. Taking no shortcuts, we connected every home and business in our service area with dedicated fiber optics. It's your personal, unrestricted, unthrottled connection to the world. Best of all, this dedicated fiber means you do not share your connection. We call this intimate dedicated connection Beck Fiber. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream sheets. When you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Ever been in a cave before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the car! But how will we... The car! Your offer has been accepted. Ever bought a house before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the closing! But how will we... The closing! News brings you real people and real news every weekday on KNDB, KNDM, and KRDK. Start your evening with the Dr. Duke Show at 4. Take a fresh look at current events with ladies of another view at 4.30. Go down the road with Joel at 5.30. Watch No Apologies with Becker at 9. Cap off your night with No Filter with Debbie at 10. Beck News. Real people, real news. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back, and we are now joined by Senator Yana Myrtle. Thank you for coming today. Oh, great. Great to be here. Love we, the show. We've had her on before. We like her attitude, and <laughs> we'll definitely be having her on again. She's a great guest, and she's here today to talk about Resolution 4002. Mm -hmm. uh, it's weird to me, but tell us what it's about. Well, it's a resolution um, that actually is called for to support women in their fourth trimester of pregnancy. Now, I'm not sure about you, 
but I'm very glad, grateful it was only three trimesters. <laughs> and, uh, and, there is, and even the word fourth trimester is an oxymoron, isn't it? Even wordsmithing. The, I mean, yes. three, four, doesn't fit. So it passed the Senate. I stood up on the floor and kind of screamed, this is not good. And, and it's also kind of a feel good, government will help you if you became a mother kind of a thing. Uh, of course, we care for postnatal uh, treatment and postnatal uh, medical stuff, but we already have that. We have WIC, we have crisis pregnancy centers all around the state that give wellness baths and centers. nets, and wellness centers. Yep. I mean, we have uh, the county nurses that now go into your home and check on your, your infant. Um, yeah, it's a scary thing when you first have a baby, absolutely. I think I've been there. And, uh, but I, I think a uh, fourth trimester is an oxymoron and a dangerous word. And, and, and a lot of people might say, why is this dangerous? Um, you know, women, it, it is. I mean, you're yes. not just, you don't just jump back into your old self. Your life has changed forever. Your body has changed. Mm -hmm. um, some women have postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. We're not saying, you know, I had eight live births. So oh, wow. I'm not saying, and, but I don't like this. Um, and there's a couple things I'm really worried about. Mm -hmm. One is, one part of it says, rather than treating them as separate entities, their care should be understood as connected. Wait a minute. You're talking mom and baby? Mom yes. and baby. They are separate entities. Don't pretend they aren't. Yes. And where do we come up with this, my body, my choice, which of course is malarkey. Yes. Yep. Putting it nicely. And so like, no, let's, they are separate entities. Why are you using this kind of language? I think it could lead to bad things. Absolutely, in, in the abortion industry, they love this language, right? And of so course. in Europe, let's go back to Europe, uh, Belgium and Holland, you can uh, go and apply to the government to put your child down uh, up to certain ages. So with this, actually, it isn't three months beyond, according to the, and I can't remember if the, it's the American Gynecology Association, one of those associations, it's a year. They're adding a year to a... What? Yeah, trimester. Yeah, it's up to a year. So we're putting language in people's heads and in law, though it's a resolution, so it doesn't necessarily, you know, it isn't a, it, it isn't a law. But we're putting language in there, just like we did with other things like choice instead of life. And, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we get used to it and go, well, it's just a tri fourth trimester, baby. Words so matter. That's terrifying. Words matter. Words and law matter yep. big time. That's terrifying so. because, number one, you're bringing them together as one entity mm -hmm. when they are two. That gives the woman the choice to do something awful. It's giving more power to the abortionists. It's giving more power to the euthanasia groups. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how, first of all, before we get any further, what's the difference between a bill and a resolution so that people understand where this goes Absolutely. from here? So a bill is something we vote on, of course, in both chambers, and then it goes to the governor to sign, and it goes into our century code. Okay. A resolution is a voice vote on either side, so it's like, I or an A, you know, you can get a, a on the board vote for it if you ask for it, but it's a resolution. It's it means the intent of the legislator is okay. X Y Z. Some resolutions go to Congress, but it's it's basically saying yay yay, this is what we believe, and therefore this. And so I'm not really sure where it came from. I stood up when I saw it on the floor of the Senate. It did pass the Senate. I hope the House defeats it. It oh. is unnecessary. The other thing that bothers me is, you know, yes, it's a scary thing and it's a miracle and it's a beautiful thing to become a mom, but you know, women aren't that weak. We don't need that much help. Hopefully family and churches and just nature and, and God's gift. I, I remember when my first son was born, I remember telling my husband, when I was pregnant, what if I don't like it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, you go through that, right? And, and I was yeah. never a babysitter or anything. And he goes, what do you mean? You know? And when my son was born, within seconds, if you looked at him wrong, I'd kill you. Yes. It just kicks it, in, right? Absolutely. It just kicks in. And yes, there are postpartum depression. Yes. I think my mother had that. And that's a whole different ball game and you need help and a good thing that's recognized now. But there's something that kicks in and my husband calls it a mama bear. And it's still there and my son is now 6'5 yep. and 25 years old, but I'll kill you if you look at him wrong. So <laughs> right, right. it's a God-given thing. But this is not about postpartum depression. No, like no, We know that we need to deal with that and address it and we recognize it. This resolution is not about that, but they throw those things in. Yeah. You know, so that you can slowly start to put other words in there. And, and the reality is, is that we have a lot of our uh, government officials who ha are in favor of infanticide. Yep. We, um, they have continually for three years voted against the, the bill to allow, to, to re require that if a baby has been aborted and it's still alive, that you have to require care. Mm -hmm. The Democrats have 
kicked that out, refused to let it come up for a vote for yeah. three years now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I, I think we, people talk about unity in our nation. There's no unity on that issue. There no. never will be, because it's evil and it's good, and, and they yes. cannot coexist. So you're absolutely right, and I think if, if people are listening now, the House of Representatives in North Dakota are gonna vote on this or on this resolution pretty soon. So call your representative and say, just kill it. Well, we don't but need the it. other piece, and you know, I know a lot of people who are single parent households, and also a lot of it is single parent moms, and yep. they've got that baby. And this, the way this is worded, when I read through it, it was like, I just listened to a couple speakers the other day, and they were talking about, because our society, and you hear it talked about all the time, the victimhood and the mm -hmm. entitlement. And this bill, the way it's worded, it's like moms are now victims. Exactly. They are now victims no. of this little person that has disrupted their whole life, their physical, mental health, whatever, and their body is all messed up now and they're not in the same shape uh -huh. they were, all this stuff. So now they're a victim and so now they are entitled to certain things, right? Yeah. And so, it, and it starts to set that stage and then as you get into it, you start looking at and they have, you know, most of them go back to work and pretty much just saying way too soon. And so let's get family, let's pay fa paid family oh, leave for yeah. like, what, a year? I mean, let's just go, because the federal employees have it now. Well, so let's start say. bringing it into yeah. our state. It seems like this opens that door well, as well. Well, absolutely, you're right. We just had a, um, a bill for a study on that. We made it to a study and we killed it on the Senate side for okay. family leave. And of course, the other side said, oh, you don't care, you're just pro-birthers. But you know, I have to say, and I'm gonna be a little bold, I am so sick and tired of being victimized because I'm a woman. So right. I tell people, I said, yes, yeah, so what? You have to put a little lipstick on. I didn't put enough on today, but you know, you have to put a little lipstick on, you have to paint the barn, you have to dress a little nicer than the guys who have three suits and right. you know, yeah, yes. you do. So just do it and go out there and conquer. I, I, I just, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of them victimizing us. We're so weak, we can't take care of our babies. Right. But on the other hand, we're so strong, we can make decisions on right. the thing. There's just a dichotomy of, 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 of uh, messages coming out about women. Right. And I tell young women, uh, be who God created you to be. It's a beautiful thing. Yep. And, be and I think strong. good men, and yeah. be strong. And be, be strong. You know. We have a friend who, um, he, he farms, and he once said, I won't use his name, he said never, has it been easier to be a mother and never have women complained more? Now, yeah. I wouldn't use his name because people would say that's sexist, yeah. but it's true. I mean, yeah. we've got disposable diapers and yes. we have conveniences that generations ago women never oh. had. But it is true that you have this, this um, philosophy or we keep hearing in magazines or on TV or mm -hmm. in the media that that it's so hard it's so much work and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so therefore you should only have one or two because the toughest job you'll ever love yeah yeah, yeah. exactly exactly yes. i remember i was blessed to stay home with my kids and raise them at home and uh, people used to tell oh oh you just stay home and i just go hmm okay then you know yeah. belittling that so you know the four of us now are old-fashioned boring women who yeah. you know don't believe in, in, in <laughs> equality uh, right. yeah, yeah. it's crazy there's so many bills by the by this time that deals with women as equality and we're being attacked that no you don't believe in women's equality but of course i do well we yeah. we have a lot more to say on this as you can tell because yeah. we're four women who are mothers and with opinions <laughs> and grandmas and we will talk more <laughs> right after this on ladies of another view on back Today's households have more digital devices than ever before. More links to family, business, education, and entertainment. Beck Communications spent over 10 years building North Dakota's fastest fiber optic internet service. Beck Lightband Internet, outpacing speeds in large cities nationwide. Lightband Internet handles all your digital needs without throttling your connection to the world. Beck Communications, valuable digital connections in rural North Dakota. Since opening in Hebron in 1940, Dakota Community Bank & Trust has been your hometown bank. Our mission has been to provide modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. We've grown with the communities we serve. Through year-round events, countless sponsorships, and nearly 7,000 hours of volunteering each year. Learn more about our 80-year history at dakotacommunitybank.com. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. 
in the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Beck. And if you don't think our conversations during the commercial breaks don't count, <laughs> we decided what we're going to talk about this segment based on that conversation. Mm -hmm. And we are joined by Senator Yana Myrtle. And we were talking during the break about how crucial this Equal Rights Amendment is. And especially it matters what's going on in North Dakota and they're going to vote on it tomorrow. Um, Yana, why is it so important and what is it about? Well, the ERA, Equal Rights Amendment, was a big battle back in the 60s and 70s, remember? And uh, it needed third, it came through Congress back then with two thirds votes and it went to the states. And it needs to be ratified by 38 states. Well, they fell short and it had a seven year deadline from a state ratified it and North Dakota did that in 1972. There's none of us lawmakers down there that would have imagined voting on that and what it means now. So it died, literally died in 1979 in North Dakota. Now the federal government is bringing it back up and it's been a push for a while. They're bringing it back up and they actually, unbeknownst to all you, uh, voted on it in the House of Representatives this week to re-ratify it and say that, oh, all those states that the deadline went, we're just gonna ignore that deadline. We want it to still be alive today and they voted without a hearing, without committee hearing, without trans trans um, transparency at all, and they didn't get two-thirds, but they said, oh, Pelosi said, that doesn't matter, two-thirds, let's not follow the law. That happened this week. Oh, now to North Dakota, uh, we are not rescinding it, we're just saying, pass it in the a, in a, in a Senate, now it'll be in the House, I hope tomorrow, because the whole nation is watching, we're just saying it died. Let's give it a decent burial. If you want the ERA amendment to come back, Bring it back with two-thirds vote out of, this, out of the uh, House and Senate. Why this is important? They are trying to codify through the ERA abortion in federal law through the ninth month. I know everybody says, no, that's not what's in the ERA. Well, the definition of sex is in the, in the ERA. So they're saying a definition of sex, no discrimination on men and women. You're a woman, you can get pregnant, so you can't touch her rights to abortion through the ninth month. It's a huge national movement from the far left. It is very dangerous. It would nullify all states' uh, abortion restrictions all across 50 states. It is a huge deal. And wow. for some reason, our resolution in North Dakota that was uh, sponsored by uh, Senator Clements, co-sponsored by me and several others, is the best resolution in the nation. So today was a big hearing, um, about an hour and a half, two hours. Tremendously good testimony on the issue that I talked about from us that want to pass it. The opponents are all saying, oh, but you believe in equal rights. Well, of course we do. But this is not what this is about anymore. It's completely turned topsy-turvy, which a lot of politics in Washington is these days. And, yeah. and also the definitions. I mean, just the definition of sex is another issue. 
for another day, but it is vitally important that tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, that your House of Representatives here in North Dakota vote yes on that resolution so we can put it to bed, then they won't have the numbers that they need. So and so, what, do you have a message for people watching? Should they be contacting Contact their representatives? Contact your House of Representatives in North Dakota, all of them if you will, respectfully vote yes on the uh, Senate Concurrent Resolution 4010. 4010 should be up tomorrow at the latest Monday, I hope tomorrow. So if you're listening to this at all, please get on the phone or email. It's easy to get a hold of them. It's, but, you uh, know, North Dakota can take the lead of the nation here and stop this movement. Exactly. We need to push North Dakota to the top of the totem pole. Yeah. I mean, we deserve to be there, number one. Right. Yeah. But I was thinking that, you know, almost everything that the original ERA amendment was going for, it was like equal rights in equal pay, uh, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Yeah. Most yeah. of those things that it was going for, we have already. Like yeah. you said, it's beating a right. dead horse. We don't need to redo yeah. something that is already dead. Right. No. And I told the men, you know, the men are listening, and the men today in the committee, I said, if you vote for this, be assured you're not voting against equal rights for women. That, that's been accomplished. Exactly. Like you said, exactly. if you want to fight for equal rights, wow, there's a lot of places in the world you can go. Right. Iran, Iraq, right. a lot that's of places. Right. Uh, women in America have equal rights. Yeah. We can walk out the door like we talked about earlier um, and do what we want to do. Did you know that, uh, by the way, 95, I think, uh, percent of female CEOs in America played female sports? That's another issue. Amazing what we've done with the, with the Title IX, with the ERA. And by the way, the ERA is what started the fight that Phyllis Schlafly and Mrs. Beverly LaHaye got involved with yeah. starting those conservative issues. Because even back then, they wanted to push abortion under the word sex, meaning my body, my choice, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked about that earlier, too. So. So no, they are never giving up. They're very clever. And with this administration we have now in Washington, D.C., we have to pass this thing tomorrow. Right. Absolutely. Because, and it's kind of bailed, and it's just like we were hearing that, you know, they're saying, well, women still are underpaid, you know, men still are making more. Well, that has to do with what field a lot of women work in versus what field a lot of men work in. And that's by design. It's not that men and women are, you know, it's not that they're not having equal rights. They just choose different careers that maybe don't pay as well, you know, in, from a female side. And that's not got anything to do with whether it's equal rights. It's got to do with what the industry dictates. Does you know. anybody remember, this was a few years ago, and I don't know if it was Google, I think it was, but there was somebody who said they looked and saw, like, why aren't we hiring more women in the tech field? Mm -hmm. And this guy wrote about it and said, they don't go into the tech field. They're oh. not interested in it. And he right. lost his job for saying so. Do you remember this yeah, a few I remember years that. ago? And, you know, and I'm you, sorry I don't remember the details. No, I remember it too. But you know, the interesting thing the left has done, they, they, they equate equal with the same. Right. right. That's, right. Not That's very it. dangerous. We're all different. Right. You and I are different. We're different looking, right. we're different talents. Men and women are different. That's another thing we've been fighting today mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the Senate committee this week on, on women's sports. We are different. Right. That doesn't mean we are not equal. Right. So they're, they're trying to tell you that equal means same. Equal means same rights, same everything. No, equal means equal playing well, field. A, and equal saying, opportunity yeah. doesn't mean we're the same. And there's a yeah. difference between equality and equity. Yeah. I mean, we all have the right and the ability to go after the same job. Yeah, right. So well, that doesn't mean you're going to get it because it's going to be based on your abilities and your commitment. Absolutely. and. Right. And their alike. equality statements, it's all about equal outcome for yeah, them. Correct. And it's like, no, 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 no. That's, that's why there's competition. That's why we're born to, it's in us yeah. to compete yeah. because it makes us better people. Yes. And, and, you know, things like that. Well, you can't translate it into equal outcome because now that's how the socialism, communism, all that stuff that's starting to permeate yeah. our society gets a, a foothold and a trophy for everybody and a, yeah and a trophy for everyone yeah <laughs> now the, a, a, a real troubling part of the era is that women would be drafted along with men is that true that is true too and, yes. and i think maybe you had a like, former is that the world we want that. yeah no it's not the world we want and i always used to tell my husband when the kids were little you know if some crazy dude or somebody breaks in to our house i hope i take little kids and go out the back door and you go to the front door and take care of it i'm not going to put him Honey, you take the kids, and I'll, I'll take the gun and go for the bad guy. I'm, yeah. uh, maybe no. I'm old-fashioned that way. Right. Like, no? You know, it's just natural. That does not make me less or him greater. Right. That's it makes, right. We're still equal under God, equal under the law. 
And so it's very frustrating in Bismarck sometimes, the things we deal with. And of course, the media and the liberals uh, turn it on us. You know, mm -hmm. you hate women, you hate babies, you hate puppies. You, I don't know what I don't hate anymore, <laughs> right. apparently. So if they know how many dogs and cats I had, they wouldn't say I hated animals, but apparently I hate animals too. Right. So it's just laughable because when they can't get their way, they just attack you. But Correct. it won't be funny if this passes. So everybody needs to contact their legislators. Yes, yes. absolutely. Get hold of absolutely. the people in the house and say, don't do it. Right. Pass this one. Yep. Yep. Right, Pass because we have a lot. Go ahead, Carmen. I think, well, and I think we talked about it yesterday. You know, we have put men in such a precarious position in our society, too, where as, a, as men, some of them that I've talked to, it's, it's a fearful position where oh, how, how are women going to look at me if I vote against this? Because, I, I mean, I don't want women to think that I don't want equal rights for women. Yeah. And it's like, no, please please do us a favor yes. <laughs> and say, no, we're men. We're real men. We're willing to stand up and protect our women. And this is how we do it. Yeah, you know? absolutely, absolutely. And that's right. what I've said the whole time. That's why I said in the Senate, you do not need to be fearful of the feminist here. This, uh, you know, protect real women and, and our unborn children. Right. Stand up. And, and right. the other thing we're doing, we're feminizing men all the time, which is another... Yes. I, we can go on right. for a few That's hours there, but yep. it's just disgusting right. yep. sometimes. Yes. They're and walking so, on and, needles and, yes. all the time. Yep. And all these, the far left women don't speak for us either. Right. So no. anyways, we're, we're going to have to go. And that went by really quickly. Thank you for <laughs> yes, coming, Yana. I appreciate it. We'll, I know we'll have you on again soon, but we'll be right back with Ladies of Another View on Beck. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Deciding how to promote your business can be hard. Visit the professionals at Dakota Promotions and Printing and let them help you through your struggle. Dakota Promotions provides promotional items and apparel from corporate gifts to team shirts and everything in between. With quick turnaround times and friendly service, they are your best choice. And best yet, you're shopping local. Visit them online at dakotapromo.com or stop in their showroom at 320 West Main in Mandan. Dakota Promotions, delivering promotions just for you. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Hero's, with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Indoor football is back in Bismarck. Bucks football season is right around the corner. Grab a friend or family member for a night of action-packed, hard-hitting entertainment. The Bucks open at the Bismarck Event Center May 8th as they take on the Massachusetts Pirates. Catch the sweetest seats in the house right on the sidelines with VIP service at a Bucks turf table. Available now for single-game purchases. Secure your tickets today by calling 701-595-0771. Bucks football, half the field and double the fun. Beck Communications is hiring. Beck Communications is seeking qualified candidates for plant technicians in our Wheatland, North Dakota location. Beck Communications is an equal opportunity employer. To view the job details, visit www.beck.coop. To apply, email your cover letter and resume to careers at bechtel.coop. Beck Communications, making connections that matter. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back. 
We are already at the lighter side, the end of wow. the show. It has flown by. Yes, it has. With Heather and Yana. I really appreciate our guests coming on. So much information, but I want to make sure that I yes. clear something up. I said don't let it happen on the last segment. On uh, House Resolution 4002, we are looking for a yes vote. No, no, no. Excuse me, other way around. Yes, that's right. No on 4002. Yes. <laughs> no. I feel like not, this is Laurel we're, and Hardy. We're, we're confusing ourselves. We want to vote okay, against 40, the ERA. Yes. 40, but that 10. would be a yes vote. On 4010, 40, a, yes a yes vote means vote. against, against. The ERA. Right. Yes. Right. So Contact. we want to make sure that right. everybody contacts their legislators on both issues because yep. they're both vitally important. So a yes vote means we'll get rid of that ERA amendment. And right. on 4002, that means that, you know, we're going to take care of women on our own, and we're not going to make them have a fourth trimester. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're going to vote no on 4002. Three is yes. plenty. Yeah. Three is plenty. And yeah. you can go to legisnd.com, right? And dot find gov. Dot gov. Dot gov. Dot gov. Sorry. There so, it is, on, right under the screen there. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Right there. You Don't can, listen to us. Just read what you You can what find you your legislators <laughs> there as well. So all yeah, you need to do is so put easy. your address in. So you think you're confused out there. Look at we have the hey. guests in here. And we just, <laughs> so it's a lot to keep track of. But. We're always confused. And we, for the lighter side, somebody else was confused, as you will see in this video <laughs> that I think you'll enjoy. Let's take a look. Ronan and Emma Lally own a small farm that they run alongside their day jobs. They have a lovely collection of animals, but wanted some ducks to complete the picture. So they got in some fertilized eggs. On the day they hatched, Ronan went to check on them, but couldn't find the ducklings in the barn. Within seconds of that, a cat jumped down from a pigeonhole within the shed over there. And uh, I kind of put one and one together, and I just presumed that the, the cat had swallowed up the ducklings. At this stage, they were missing for about six hours. So Ronan thought there was no hope at all. After searching around the farm, they eventually found the ducklings. But unfortunately, the cat, Della, had got there first. I ended up catching the cat with a duck in her mouth at this stage and um, it really looked, Ronan was like, she's going to kill the duck. I was thinking, oh no, yeah. we're only after getting them back and now she's going to eat them right in front of us. Then Emma noticed something unusual. I was like, Ronan, she's not actually forcefully holding this duck. That's when the amazing thing happened. We put the, the cat down. Uh, put the ducklings down, and then all of a sudden the three little ducklings waddled straight underneath the cat. The cat lay down on her side, put her paw o over one of the little ducklings, and was kind of nursing the duckling in towards us. So we were, I mean, just absolutely mm. blown away with this. Because normally cats would eat little small birds, but it was absolutely, it was, it was just, it was awesome. It was just incredible to see it. Oh my That's gosh! So She's nursing ducklings. Oh. It was incredible. Once a mother, always a mother. Oh, yeah. yeah. That is amazing. I have a friend, and I, I wish she would have taken a picture or video, but she didn't, and I actually saw it with my own eyes. She had a dog who never had puppies herself but had a miscarriage once years earlier, and whenever their cats had kittens, this dog would help the mother nurse the kittens. Oh, my mm. goodness. It's so So nice. when they went camping, they had to bring a couple kittens with them because oh, <laughs> or else gosh. the dog would, you know, be all engorged and painful. But Oh, I oh. bet. Isn't that and amazing? That is yeah. so cool. Well, you yeah. know, life goes on. We help one another. It's all good stuff. Exactly, exactly. And isn't it something where so much we can learn from animals, oh, you know? Yes. You just sit and watch them. I, I was watching a couple of male pheasants and it looked like one, it was almost like it was a father-son out in our backyard the other day. The, both of them were male and you know they were sitting pecking along and doing their thing and then pretty soon they're looking at each other. It's just like, okay, what's your next move? You know, because <laughs> I'm on it. And I was like, they're challenging each other and then they go back to eating for a while, but then pretty soon they're just toddling off together. But it was just so fun to watch. and. Just to see interaction with the animals and how that carries into our human life too, I just, I just think it's really fun to see what you can pick up on, or even watching birds and how they do things. You know, that kind of reminds me of the the Mandan High School. Um, I think St. Joe's is doing it, where they're they're going to have a Montessori high school, mm -hmm. and part of the curriculum is to take the kids to a farm 
once a week and they get to care for the animals. I'm oh. thinking what a wonderful thing. They're going to be able to learn um, so many things from the animals. No kidding. We think that they learn from us and we teach them things, but I think it's the other way around. And well, learning that milk doesn't come from the grocery store. Yes. <laughs> oh. You know, we're losing some of that even in North Dakota where kids don't realize. You know, my sister used to talk about, she didn't realize, she never thought of farming as like when you go to buy your vegetables in the store, your fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. She said, I never gave a thought that it would be like big farmers because we always had a garden at the farm, you know. <laughs> but that's a real industry is True. farming vegetables, you know. But she never thought like that. And the same way with our meat, our milk, our yeah. everything. So, And yeah. there's something about getting close to the land and close to animals that yes. I think does Grounding. us good. Mm -hmm. Dirt uh, under the, the fingernails. Kids. It's yep. Playing in the dirt is a real thing. It's it really is. We need to connect with the dirt. I mean, it, all those yes. yep. microbes in there that helps show. our health. Yep. Yes, and that kids need to be outside. They need to be with nature. I was lucky that we did live in the country for a couple of years, and our kids loved it. But I had uh, friends who live out in the country. And cool. so I that's a great friendship to have because you can go out, hang out in the country yep. for a while, and you can come back. Um, so, yeah. okay, well, it's been a great show today. Thank you yes. for joining us. It's been fun. And I hope you join us again. Tomorrow we have a lot of lot to talk about in politics, and but we always like to bring you the lighter side too and make make your day a little bit brighter. So uh, join us again next time on Ladies of Another View on Beck. <laughs>